Hey, welcome everyone out there watching and tuning in. My name is Alexa Henderson and I'm one of the co-owners of Next Level Trainings in Philadelphia. And tonight we're having a special guest. This is actually our first interview of an interview series that we're starting. So we thought we would start out with none other but our own beloved uh, alumni and transformational trainer mindset coach, Ryan Clarkin. So welcome to the show, Ryan. So happy to Thank have you here. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, so you and I have known each other for a couple of years now, about five years. I was actually present for the beginning of your transformation. And it's been amazing to see you just like take the tools of transformation and personal development and like skyrocket. And what you've created in a really short period of time has been super amazing and inspiring and you're also still young and have all this life in front of you. So I'd love to just hear from you. Like, what's it like being Ryan Clark? Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's, it's fun. I mean, it, it really is. It's fun. Um, I'm just, what it, what's it like to be Ryan Clark? And like, I mean, it's, it, it's been a journey and I'm really grateful and fortunate to have found these tools and to really, because the biggest thing that Next Level has supported me with personally is finding my purpose and finding direction in life. And that's what I, I feel like a lot of people struggle with. And once I found my purpose and I went all in on it, I was able to take off. So I'm really just creating, the, always creating new things. And where my mind is at is like, how can I take my level of service to a new level? So like I'm you know doing things like this, I'm creating podcasts, I'm facilitating events, I'm you know working on I have multiple projects in the works, but really um it's just this excitement and this energy of um giving back at a really high level and when I'm not doing that, I'm hanging out with my girlfriend, you know, like um you guys are living yeah. in the desert, you said? You guys Yeah, know? we're yeah, we're living in Indio now and and you know after this all passes we we plan on traveling. Um but awesome. such a big part of my life is about coaching and facilitating, giving back. And it's what I love. Yeah. So I made a decision at a very young age, at like the age of 17, yeah. that whatever I did for a living, because I saw this chart and it was like 70% of your life you spend working. I looked at that chart. I'm like, I am not going to spend that amount of time doing something that I hate. Wow. So I just started asking myself questions like, what am I passionate about? What do I love? What do I enjoy? And um coaching and transformation is one of them. And so I'm just, I'm living, I'm truly living the life that I love and supporting the people around me and doing that the same, because I feel like it's possible. And although there are challenges that are very present right now and that will continue to come our way, we can always find ways to make the best out of what life is giving us. Yeah, I mean, that's one thing that I've noticed about you from day one, and especially the more that we've talked and gotten to know each other over the years, like, you're always bringing this fresh, idealistic, beautiful perspective to things. And like you're, you are a source of inspiration for the people that are around you. I mean, I was talking to my dad, Joe, earlier today, and he was saying that, you know, when he talks with you, you're all, you mentor him when he's in conversation mm -hmm. with you. And that's just like naturally your way of being and it's your gift. And you've had that, as you said, from an early age. And when you first even came to the, the trainings that we run, like you were one of the people who was like, I have a vision at like 19, right? Mm, and yeah. to, see, to see you just consistently put that into action and develop yourself. And now you're, you're leading these trainings uh, out on the West Coast. And like, yeah. like, it's really, really cool to be able to stand for other people. Thank you. And becoming a trainer has been the one of the most challenging and rewarding things that I've ever done. And, um, and yeah, you know, what I remember looking at Joe and being in a discovery workshop with Joe and seeing Chris Lee facilitate, just fe feeling so hungry and looking at Joe and be, and I remember saying this to him and I'm sure he'll re recall this. It's like, I want to be there. I want to be doing that. And he's like, I get it, Ryan, you'll, you know, you'll be there one day. And so I've just been on this relentless path. Nobody has been able to stop me. Nobody will stop me from, you know, being my best because I'm clear that I'm a vehicle for others. Yeah. And I'm a vehicle that will support that. It, like I am truly passionate at igniting people's potential. So, and so that's just what I do. And as very quickly, when I discovered this transformational work through next level, I'm like, I want to learn how to give that gift. That's so and, cool. You know, 
Go ahead. Yeah. And so you and I earlier, so there's a couple things that I want to touch on here. And I want to say that the people who really take this brand of work and run with it, like they do become servant leaders. Like it is all about being a vehicle for giving back. And, and the experience is as we all do more for others, like we grow exponentially. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that's a really beautiful thing. And also, I know you, we were saying earlier that you were already following Tony Robbins. Like, will you tell us a little bit about like what your journey through self-development has looked like? Yeah. I mean, it, it really all started with, um, you know, being sick of my own insecurities. And mm -hmm. I remember when I was 15, I was out of shape. I was the second shortest kid in my grade. And I remember I was five foot two and I was 108 pounds, but I wasn't, but I was like, I wasn't overweight. I was out of shape. I didn't have any muscle and I just felt so self-conscious. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing one of my friends who was really fit and he kind of like made a joke at me and, and, and it like pushed me over the edge where I'm like, I'm going to learn how to work out. I'm going to learn how to get fit. And I went from being terrified to sh like, for anybody to see my body in like gym class swimming, like when we had swimming to only two years later, standing on a stage in front of a thousand plus people, like presenting my physique at a bodybuilding competition at a physique. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. Because yeah. when, because like what I like when I want to do something and I want to get really good at it, I just become obsessed. Like I go all in and that's, that's like the, one of my keys to success and so I like went to this guy that made a joke about me when I was 15. I asked him to show me how to work out. And, you know, my dad taught me some things about working out as well. And I just literally seven days a week and just went all in. Sometimes I would take some off days and I learned, I became a sponge and learned everything that I could about this. And very quickly, this led to personal development because if you're growing and you're passionate about growing and improving your body, you find people, you find role models online I'm so grateful for the internet. Um, hey, Sanjeev, uh, that that literally uh, reveal new possibilities to you. So I just decided I was like, I'm going to become a sponge for learning and developing myself. And even in high school, like my best friend, he would call me the fountain of knowledge, like as a joke. Because <laughs> whenever he had challenges that he faced, he would come to me and I would share him share advice with him. Wow. And um, I we, we'd kind of joke about it, like I was like, oh, I'm the fountain of knowledge, but like we'd be like you know, I would always give them tips and tools and things like that. And I've always been passionate about helping people. So, um, and then beyond that, I, I discovered Lewis Howe's a school of greatness podcast. I discovered these different entrepreneurs and, and I realized and found like people are really creating an epic life. And before then I was like, well, I could do three jobs. Like I had three ideas for jobs I could do in my mind. And they were all boring jobs. And I was like, I don't want to do that. Like I had this idea in my mind that I needed to grow up and be an adult and it would suck and it would be boring. And my life was over. Like we see so many people do when we're kids, right? Yeah. Sure. And, yeah. And so you know, a leader, Lewis Howes, you know, was one of them showed me a new possibility through his podcast. His sister ended up inviting me in the trainings, Heidi House. Yeah. And um, that, yeah, I just went all in and used that as a gym for my heart, a gym for my for my soul, for my spirit. And, and the thing that I didn't get to develop and transform in bodybuilding was my self image. Mm -hmm. You see, I was still, I was competing in front of um, thousands of people and showing my physique, but I was still terrified of what they thought about me. Mm -hmm. And I, it still wasn't enough. Mm. And un, it wasn't until I found transformation and learned how to transform how I see myself and how I see the world that I really found true peace with who I am and the tools to really create a fulfilling life and the life that I want versus the life that maybe other people tell me I should have. Yeah, totally. And I think that, that it's so interesting how like, uh, people's biggest challenges when they rise up and, and use it as fuel to push themselves forward, right? They don't just accept that like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm never going to be something bigger than this in my life. When they really use that as fuel to go for the things that they love, mm -hmm. like that makes them more powerful. And how many people are out there that are just expecting that they're the only people who feel, you know, that they that they don't love themselves or that they can't get to their goals. I mean, this is like such a 
common thing that we see in the trainings. It's like everybody's operating like like having poor self-esteem or not having a vision is like just the way that it is. And yeah. so cool that these tools and somebody like you who can support people through their their uh, you know limiting beliefs can show them a different way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's super cool. And, you know, if you are hungry to transform your life and you're ready to make change, you can. Like, it's definitely not comfortable to, like, ch go from where you are right now to where you want to be, but it's definitely worth it. And um, it, it, every major change in my life, like, I, if, if you want to make a change right now in any area of your life, it, it came at a point where I was absolutely fed up with creating the old patterns. And it was like that one time where it was just too much where I was like, I, I'm not going to drop my standards ever, ever again. And I was just fed up and a challenge that a lot of people face is they're stuck, which means they are in those patterns. They're having breakdowns or having challenges with their finances. They're having challenges with their health. Maybe they're having challenges in a relationship and the cycle just keeps going and going and going, but they're stuck because they do not have a vehicle and they don't know how to make that change. Yeah. They might want to make the change, but they don't know how. Yeah. And so that's why, you know, tools like Next Level and tools like Shift and these workshops that we're leading give people that path where they can go from point A to point B, where they can go from, hey, my finances are, are a challenge right now. How can I develop a prosperous mindset so I can start attracting financial freedom in my life? Or my relationships aren't working. How can I shift my relationship with myself so that I can attract more of what I want or you know my um I'm not in the job or in the career that I want well again it it really it all comes back to your our relationships with ourself and that's mm -hmm. something that we don't think about a lot mm -hmm. we just go through life and we're we're very busy and we're doing our things but this is just a simple question that I want everyone listening to ponder how's your relationship with you like when you pull all of the distractions away, mm. how do you feel about yourself? And there might be a lot of answers there. I feel great about myself, you know, or maybe not, or I don't feel so great about myself. Mm -hmm. And if that's the case, um, know that there's, there's a process that you can use to feel confident and feel powerful in who you are and um, really to, transform any pain in your life in, into purpose and into extraordinary results. That's the beauty of this work. I love that. So why do you think that now is a great time for people to invest in themselves and really take, take this work on? You know, that's a really good question. And when people say, especially right now, when people say, bring up like investing in themselves, there are some people who are like, yes, I get it. Like I'm all about it. I invest in myself all the time. And then there's other people who f they freeze <laughs> and they're like, what, you know, I'm not, I'm not spending any money right now. I don't know what's going to happen. And it's not even investing in yourself financially. Like I view investing in yourself as a mindset. And I don't mm -hmm. believe that you can actually spend anything because it's a law of physics that energy can't be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred. So we're always investing. And the question is, what are we investing in and what's the return that we're getting? You know, maybe we're investing four hours every night in Netflix, where if we were to invest that four hours in developing a business or writing a book, we would have prosperity down the road, but we're missing out on that because we're not using that time to invest in the future outcome that we want. So yeah. I believe now is a more important time than ever to invest in yourself because we are in a down time. And if we look at history, are you familiar with uh, Napoleon Hill, who wrote Thinking Grow Rich? Have you heard of him? Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah. Yes. So do you know when Napoleon Hill wrote that book? During the Great Depression? Yes. Was it? Okay, I was just guessing. That's yeah, so yeah. Napoleon Hill wrote that book during the Great Depression. Wow. Um, either, this one you might not be familiar with, Walt Disney. <laughs> I mean, I definitely know who Walt Disney is. Yeah, 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 of course. <laughs> Everybody knows who Walt Disney is. Well, do you know when Walt Disney really started going all in on, on Disney? Wow, no, I don't. During the Great Depression. Wow, that's awesome. And, and, and it, you know, if you understand economies and, you know, trading, and I'm not giving any financial investment advice here, mm -hmm. but um, 
you know, it, it's always like buy low, sell high. Like it's common sense investing, buy low, sell high. Mm -hmm. So when things, and, and how do you take that into personal development? When times are low, buy into yourself. Mm -hmm. Buy into your dreams, buy into your passions. Mm -hmm. I don't believe it's an accident that all the distractions are being stripped away right now. Mm. I think this is an opportunity for humanity as a whole to really look at ourselves, to look as at how we're functioning as a whole, how we're functioning yes. as a as a um, as a complete unit, yeah. and to transform that, to see what's not working, and instead of judging the people who are, you know, the leaders, yeah. leadership is about recognizing that you have a leader within you. Mm, so true. And and rising up. So I believe that. You know, I operate from an abundance mindset and I believe that, uh, you know, it's there's it's always the right time to invest in yourself. And I'm not saying to spend the last, you know, one hundred dollars that you have. I'm not saying that I'm saying it's not not about your resources. It's about your resourcefulness when it comes to mm -hmm. creating the life that you want. The moment I became financially free wasn't when I learned how to make a thousand plus dollars in a day. That wasn't mm -hmm. the moment I became financially free. The moment I became financially free was the day that I decided that money wasn't going to make decisions for me. And it, I wasn't, I stopped making the excuse, I can't do it because I don't have the money. Yeah. And I, and I shifted in the mindset of if I want something, I'm going to find a way because I'm worth it. Yeah, 100%. And I, I would say similar experience for me after doing the trainings, that was sort of like my beginning of breakthrough around financial freedom and it was like i was in la i was making the least amount of money that i had ever made but because i had done these trainings when i wanted 500 dollars to do something that somebody invited me to i was like i don't know how i'm going to create that money but i'm definitely not allowing that to hold me back from my dreams because this isn't a dress rehearsal right like this is our yeah. lives a hundred percent. And there's a lot that goes into it. There's challenges around worthiness. There's challenges around asking. There's a lot of challenges and limiting beliefs that hold people back in that. And it takes a little bit more than a interview to yes. break through that stuff. Yep. Um, and I think that's why we're hosting more trainings and having this live yeah. workshop coming up tomorrow. Yeah. So awesome. So let's tell, so you guys, if you're, if you're liking hearing about mindset and transforming your 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 relationship with yourself and your your results and your finances uh we're actually having an awesome workshop tomorrow that ryan clerkin's going to be leading you want to tell us about that yeah so i'm going to be sharing my five my top five mindset tools that you can use to thrive in uncertain times and we can all agree that we're in a pretty uncertain time right now and the thing that we want to remember is um there's going to be more uncertain times. Life is filled, like life is uncertainty. One hundred percent, really. Like that's life. Yeah. And and I believe thriving is training yourself to have the ability to create certainty in the face of uncertainty, to create peace in the face of anxiety, to create what you want in the face of whatever life is throwing your way. And so I'm going to be sharing my top five tools on, on how to do that in tomorrow's training. And we're going to have a blast. Um, it's open not only to next level graduates, but the uh, entire world, please world, go up. <laughs> it's free. It's all yeah. just like give from the heart, uh, community come together. Yeah. So this is really an opportunity to gather and just develop yourself and grow. And of course, I'm going to bring my absolute best and I have some really special tools uh, prepared for you guys. And there's going to be sharing and laughter and we're all going to be growing together. It's it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be great. Great. So I will put the link in underneath the, the live video for you guys to register. It's free. Bring your friends, bring your family. And uh, how many how many people are already signed up? Uh, there are over 200 people signed up. Wow. <laughs> it's going to yeah. be a party. It's going to be a party. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So really, and please in the comments, like, let us know specifically, of course, um, I, I have the five tools ready for you guys, but I can customize this to what you want and what you need. So let us know in the comments, like what challenges are you facing right now with what's happening so that I can bring the maximum value to you 
on this training tomorrow at um, 8 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday, 8 p.m. Eastern. It's going to be a 90 minute training from 8 p.m. Eastern to 9 30 p.m. Eastern. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Ryan Clark. It's been a pleasure as always. And uh, can't wait to see more of you tomorrow and have everybody here with us too. Of course. Thank you. Thanks for organizing this and having me on and for being the source of all of this. Thanks so much. All right.